Friday Worship 2323, 8.05 p.m., Lebanon, Connecticut. And welcome to tonight's service. Upcoming video, there will be a story time living with an African grape, a train video on 3 4. Worship services will be 210, 217, which is Transfiguration Friday, and Lent number one is 224. And Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday service will be in early April. And we just came back from a great date, better one that I've had in quite some time. So, welcome. The service will begin soon. Join us. So, we will do the prelude intro and we will get started on a rare Friday night all the long. Prelude tonight is created me. Excuse me.
All right, here are your announcements for tonight. The next train trip will be March 4th, 23, from New London to New York City. That'll be Shoreline East and Amtrak. And this cantata, Testimony of Life, will be presented 3.15 to 4.9. I'm trying to see if I can mix this into our regular services. I know it says no PowerPoint for these services, but we will see what we can do. And worship services will be every Friday or Saturday, depending on what is going on. Since, obviously, may may not always have time to do these services on a day-to-day basis. Anything else? To receive the call to worship. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And the light shone in the darkness. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And the light shall not be quenched. And we please rise and say, when they are open in him. 324, when I survey the wondrous cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the press of glory died, my richest king, I count the loss and put the temp on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, saved in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow me in gold down. Did e'er so slow and sorrow me or thorns compose so rich a crown. Were the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small? Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Let's pray. Lord, tonight we come before you, reminding us 
how we survey that wondrous cross. For you are the creator, restorer, and ruler. We are prone to point the finger at others and to pervert justice by its exaggerated charges. We want the rich to feed the hungry, but not to share from our own provisions. We prefer charity and principle, but in practice evade our duty even to our own kin. Some of us live in half-empty houses where there are families crowded into rooms too small for them, if they have rooms at all. Forgive our failures to live up the best we know, to let the oppressed go free even after you freed us. For you are our all in all, this night and every night. In Jesus' name, amen. You are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. <coughs> Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. All right, I apologize for yawning. And the anthem tonight is The Miracle of Bread. Oh uh -huh. 
Wait, what a beautiful anthem. All right, thank you, choir. That was very pretty. And it is the miracle of bread. So we come to the place of prayer tonight, and there is some excitement to talk about tonight, as today we actually went on a much better date than what we experienced last weekend. So we want to say welcome to Brian Diaz, who who we had opportunity to spend the afternoon with today, and certainly there is more where that came from next week. And as always, we will continue to pray for the usual people and give you up to lift up those that you know. And the person tonight is 2203 in his time. In his time, in his time, he made all things beautiful. In his time, Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way. That you do just what you say in your time. Lord, tonight we come before you, reminding us that you do everything in your time, not based on our time but what you have in store for us each and every day. And, obviously, and what we did today was a symbol of your, of your work in us to visit somebody new, somebody that actually made us feel welcomed with open arms. Somebody that we feel like we can open up to. Someone that can change our fortunes. To what we are to. Things that we've come too accustomed to. Being left behind. And feeling left out. We thank you for Brian Diaz. And we hope that this begins a new chapter. And certainly one that we can develop a healthy relationship with him as we progress onward. And with this comes obviously a sacrifice. And having to put somebody in their place, someone that obviously clearly had no idea what they were doing. And that was the individual that we hung out with last weekend. We continue to pray a new Boston comes. So we got a new relationship. Now, the search for a new Boston can begin. We want to send our congrats to mom and her getting a new job today. That is awesome. But through all this goodness, Sadness is never far behind. We think of our country at war with guns. The need to kill and the need to feel, to pull the trigger and to hurt other people 
that have no regard for human life. It's disgusting. The old love one another turns into hate one another. And the old adage, see something, say nothing. The sense of entitlement is astronomical. We continue to pray for the usual people that we've been praying for all along. The Barnaby family and certainly continue to pray and hope that eventually we still get those answers. Although now it's highly unlikely. And for the viewers at home, we pause. And give you the chance to lift up those that you know. And so it's to this end. You gave me Brian. And now we can open up that chapter with him of somebody new and somebody that will make us feel welcomed every time we hang out with him. And so it is in that prayer that you taught us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time, Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way. That you do just what you say in your time, in your time, in your time. Make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, my life to you I pray. May each song I have to say be to you a lovely thing in your time. Your All right, it is offertory time, meaning it's a time where you guys can subscribe to this channel and continue checking out some of those other videos that I've been working on as well. You guys are loving the bird video. And there are two offertories tonight. One is Same Old Highway by the Swan Brothers and Amazed by Your Love, which will lead right into the message. And will the ushers please come forward? As we receive the evening's gifts and offering. So the same old highway.
the car just uh, passed by the park. I saw a vehicle sitting way down the road. It's underneath an overpass. Uh, a lot of prostitution and drug deals go down there. So what I'm going to do is go to the top of that overpass and see what I can uh, come down and, and uh, figure out what they're doing. White female, all I can do is all I can make sure is it's a white female in there. I can't see the I can't see the driver's side, but uh, it appears though she may have been loading the switch. I'm not sure. I saw her like look like she removed the cap of the Jeep, spit it out for the truck. And the baby's shooting up right now. We just had to go get a close look. Yeah, a lot of prostitution down. There's a lot of drug activity goes on down here in this bridge. Yeah, we're trying to load over. Stays calm. Yeah, Let's see your hands. What what what'd you just stick between your hands? Let me see your hands. Come on out, man. Let's see your hands. Let's see his legs. Tell us what's wrong. His legs. They're eating blood. Okay, well, you just turn around. Face the truck, please. What's in the... Is there anything on the seat? Ben, what's wrong is that you're sitting underneath here. Please state your name, sir. You don't have any weapons or anything on you? No, sir. Okay, a lot... Keep your hands up there, please. Okay. A lot of prostitution deals, a lot of a lot of drug usage goes on out here, okay? I'm literally laying on the ground. Put your hands up there, ma'am, on the truck. I'm not gonna ask you to tell me once again, okay? You think this is a game? You think something's funny about this? Put your hands behind your back. I'm not my shoulder dislocated. Put your hands in front of you, girl. Well, we came down here, okay, with the intentions of making contact with y'all and talking. But when y'all, when I came up, and my partner hit both the other tires, okay, but he's putting something definitely under his, un, between his legs or underneath his thigh, okay? That's not, that's not normal behavior. Why don't, you, why don't you stand up here in front? Syringe? Well, when I was watching it, it looked like they were stuffing it, so it would not surprise me if somewhere in here there is going to be a... <laughs> oh, you Jesus, all of my life through. was found on his side, well, which, right. yeah, which I can place now. Well, so, well, so well, 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 Tell 
what your what turn you dish is supposed to have. Oh, well, not it's not your crab. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Well, look over here. Did you find that one? Did she find that box? Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen lord we are amazed by your love as we are as we were once broken inside and sometimes it feels like it's the same old highway to take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world as we continue our walk through the spring semester leading up to Lent. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. All right. So the reading tonight comes from 1 Corinthians 2 1 to 15 and it builds off of what we were talking about last friday so first corinthians 2 1 to 15. You'll remember, friends, that when I first came to you to let you in on God's sheer, sheer genius, I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches and the latest philosophy. I deliberately kept it plain and simple. First, Jesus and who he is, then Jesus and what he did, Jesus crucified. I was unsure of how to go about this, it felt totally inadequate. I was scared to death. If you want the truth of it, and so nothing I said could have impressed you or anyone else. But the message came through anyway. God's spirit and God's power did it, which made it clear that your life of faith is a response to God's power, not to some fancy mental or emotional footwork by me or anyone else. We, of course, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you once you get your feet on firm spiritual ground. But it's not popular wisdom, the fashionable wisdom of high price experts that will be out of date in a year or so. God's wisdom is something mysterious that goes deep into the interior of his purposes. You don't find it lying around on the surface. It's not the latest message, but more like the oldest. What God determined as the way to bring out his best in us long before we ever arrived on the scene. The experts of our day haven't a clue about what this etern eternal plan is. If they had, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have killed the master of the God-designed life on a cross. That's why we have this scripture text. <coughs> Excuse me. No one's ever seen or heard anything like this, never so much as imagined anything like it. What God has arranged for those who love him. But you've seen and heard it because God by his spirit has brought it all out into the open before you. The spirit not content to fill around on the surface dives into the depths of God. 
It brings out what God planned all along. Whoever knows what you're thinking and planning except you yourself. The same with God, except that he not only knows what he's thinking, but he lets us in on it. God offers a full report on the gifts of life and salvation that he's given us. We don't have to rely on the world's guesses and opinions. We didn't learn this by reading books or going to school. We learned it from God who taught us person to person through Jesus. And we're passing it on to you the same firsthand. Firsthand personal way. The unspiritual self, just as it is by nature, can't receive the gifts of God's spirit. There's no capacity for them. They seem like so much silliness. Spirit can be known only by spirit, God's spirit, and our spirit in open communion. Spiritually alive, we have access to everything God's spirit is doing. It can't be judged by unspiritual crits. Isaiah's question. Is there anyone around who knows God's spirit? Anyone who knows what he's doing? Has been answered. Christ knows, and we have Christ's spirit. Here ends the read, and may God have a blessing to the read of these holy words. So we've been talking about when it becomes a game in relationship. Now, that cycle obviously was turned around today and into the scene then where we had a very beautiful visit with Brian, and it really just felt welcomed. It's something that we haven't felt in quite some time. But obviously this service was pre-planned before what we did today. <clears throat> so let's talk about how, why do we get the same results? So let's say if today was the opposite. Okay. Let's say we got the same results over and over again, and it was a vicious cycle that needed to be broke. The reason why we get the same results on days is because sometimes we feel like they are out to get us or they are have some predetermined notion of who us as individuals are. Now, is that normal behavior? No. So basically what we want to do here is we want to sort of look at it in, in a way of the cross. Like how does it relate to the cross? It actually relates to the cross in several ways. One being when we get the same results, sometimes it feels like we are crucified, meaning, meaning they have nailed us to the cross like this. Number one. Number two, they make us feel like we are nobodies, like we talked about last week. Uh, the cross symbolizes everything that God had created in us and for us. We Sometimes we feel rejected. Like they're telling us, as you will hear when we get to Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the, the famous words, crucify him, crucify him. And when Pilate says, I am to crucify your king, it feels that way, doesn't it, sometimes? When we, when we go on dates and, we, and when we get the same result, it sometimes feels like that is what they are saying to us, doesn't it? But actually... It's usually because they did something wrong and you didn't do anything wrong. So as I was talking to Brian today, he was telling me about um, a time when he dated somebody on the spectrum as well. But this, but this one was very low functioning, meaning 
on the lower end of the scale than I am. He was saying how he became very possessive over me and this individual became possessive over Brian. Like, you know, he couldn't go to the bathroom because he was, because, because the guy would blow up his phone saying, oh, you're off with this person or you're off with that person. And obviously the answer was no. It's like, I know. He wouldn't do anything to hurt us. He wouldn't do anything to us. But this individual just did not, did not understand the fact that he, that he has certain things that he has to do during the day. We all have certain things we have to do during the day. You figure Monday through Thursday, guess what? I'm at QB in some form of way. Like the three in Willamette, the one, the one time in Danielson. And, it, and obviously the one time from home. So from this studio, from this booth, or from this couch where this is filmed. I'm sorry, I I totally forgot what I was saying. Oh, right. And it was almost like he became too possessive and territorial where he was holding on to him like a koala bear. Very clinging. See, that's like being on the cross. Because Brian could not could not breathe. Brian felt like he was he was like this, me, being nailed to that cross because of somebody's perception, somebody's own individual actions that got him feeling like like oh my god I can't do anything, like oh no. <clears throat> those are the same results that we get with people like that it doesn't matter if you're on the spectrum or not there is a balancing act between between knowing okay this is you know during the day like okay like oh like oh brian's at work from this time to this time or like oh i'm at school from this time to this time and so on this individual obviously did not understand the fact that we can't always be the center of attention we can't always have their attention constantly Come to think of it, that sort of was the same way with Charlie. I know we're not really allowed to talk about previous relationship, but it's it. From what he was telling me, it was like the same dynamics I worked there. Like Charlie was like became possessive of me, where he was like hugged to, it was like clinging to us. Now, I don't mind, now, it's perfectly fine if you want to hug and, you know, cuddle up with your loved one. That is fine. But it's the cross of the line of being clingy and being possessive. That is a problem. That will lead to them not wanting to spend time with you, not wanting anything to do with you. And then that leads to to us being nailed to that cross. And actually, last week, last weekend, I had, obviously this was before this one, today, I visited with somebody in Middletown, 
And I went to the Cromwell Diner with them, and I thought everything was going to be fine. No. It was not fine. At all. I went to lunch with this guy, and it just... It, something just did not seem right at all. And it led to a place of almost like the airport story. To the place of being, being blamed. Or being called out for what we did wrong. Obviously, we didn't do anything wrong. But you see, this is what this is. It's, let me go back to what I just read. In verse 8, where it says, No one's ever seen or heard anything like this. Never so much as imagined anything quite like it, what God has arranged for us, for those who love him. Yes, so what God has arranged for us is, is us understanding the fact that Jesus, who came, did his teaching for 30-something years, and that was rose, that went into Jerusalem, the Hosannas, and everybody welcomed him to being on the cross. And then with the dying and the rising three days later. This is what this is, guys. We get the same result. And it's almost like as that operatory that's the same old highway. That's exactly what this is. It's going down the same old road and hoping that you'll see different scenery. Now, let's fast forward to today. A much different outcome. An outcome that actually wanted. So, you live to see another one. Didn't get... <clears throat> didn't get the chat saying, oh, you did this run, or you did that run. No. No. Because we didn't do anything wrong. We had a good day. If this, and we could think about this in general. How many times, I want to know, has there ever been a time where you felt you were put on that cross because of somebody's own actions? Leave me a comment down below. It always leads to interesting discussion. But you see, the reality, guys, is this. In order to get the results that we got today, we have to find the right avenues to go meet people and to go look for somebody that will treat us properly. And as we come to his table tonight, think about it. That was one of the stages of the cross. To be at this table. All who will receive him. And as it says, we haven't seen anything like this. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. That's right. Nobody ever thought of the cross and what it Sim, what it symbolizes and what we remember it as. And I, there's a lot more to be said about why we get the same results. We'll have to save that for next week. Amen. Communion hymn is the usual one. Come share the Lord. 22 says, see no.
we gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the love and song, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Find in our forgiveness here. We in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is The one city meets us here in the breaking of the bread. We'll gather soon, where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. And our usual communion anthem is given for you.
sang a hymn and went out. So on the night he was betrayed in the first stage of the cross, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner he took the cup, and after blessing it, he said, In this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So as often as we eat of the bread and we drink from the cup, we remind him that he is the living Christ who is alive even now in 2023. And he is always with us as we remember what that cross symbolizes and what is to come. Let's pray. Lord, your table, it's a wonderful image of the things that happened to you that day. And so now as we leave this sacred place, May we always remember what this table means and the sacrifice that you made for us. Amen. <clears throat> Those in him is near to the heart of God. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, Sent from the heart of God, let us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God, there is a place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God. The place where we are, Savior, me, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, send from the heart of God. Oh, those who wait before thee. Near to the heart of God, there is a place of full release. Near to the heart of God, place where all is joy and peace. Near to the heart of God. O Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. O those who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. And now may the Lord receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you walk through life. And remember what that cross symbolizes. For we've never seen anything like this. And he is always going to be with us. And we will, and I will talk to you next week. Amen.
Disclose the brightness of thy face. And before 